Okay, um, here we're just going to set up a linear programming problem uh, from the word problem. Um, so some key things to look for here is we know a linear programming problem is going to have a maximization or a minimization of the objective. And then also a set of linear constraints. Um, and also watch out for the non-negativity constraints. So as we go through this, um, let's see if we can find the different pieces that we're looking for. Since the linear programming problem starts with the um, objective, let's look for the word maximize or minimize in this um, word problem. And we'll usually find it at the end. And so here it says, um, if zigzag makes $12 profit, oops, if it makes $12 profit, on each zig and eight dollars profit on each zag find the number of each that the company should make in order to maximize its profit okay so if it's we've got zigs and zags in this problem so let's let X represent the number of zigs and Y represent the number of zags and so when we find the profit, we know we're supposed to maximize the profit. And here the profit is found by taking $12 for each zig. So that's 12x. And adding $8 for each zag. So that's time, or plus 8 times y. So there's our objective. Looking back in the problem, um, we're supposed to look at the table here that's given to us. And here we can see we've got different machines, how long they can work, um, and how long it takes hours per piece. So for instance, machine one can work up to 100 hours, and in that time um, it will take four hours per piece or per zag and 12 hours per zig so four hours for every zag tells me that's going to be our 4y and 12 hours for every zig that's going to be a 12x so 12x plus 4y will tell me how many hours machine one will operate and I have up to a hundred well, up to means less than or equal to. I can't work machine one any more than 100 hours, so that's the first um, linear constraint, a linear inequality constraint. Um, the second one, we can go up to 120 hours, and it's eight hours for each uh, zag produced and eight hours for each zig. So that's 8x plus 8y less than or equal to, oops, less than or equal to 120. And then machine 3, similarly then, we have um, 6 zigs and 0, or 6 hours per zig, zag, and 0 hours per zig. Okay, so that's going to be a 0x, which means that term is gone, plus 6y. So that's just 6y. It's less than or equal to 84. One thing that's not put in here is the non-negativity constraints, and that's the fact that we know um, we're going to produce more than 0 or greater than or equal to 0 zigs and we're going to produce at least zero zags. Okay, So when we set this up then, uh, to solve it, we would want to graph the constraints, find the feasible region, find the corner points. Okay, so let's get this down first of all. Graph the constraints. Find the feasible.
feasible region. Find the corner points of the feasible region. Evaluate the objective at those corner points. And in this case, we'll identify the maximum profit and clearly express our answer. Okay. Another little hint as we try to go through and graph these, notice these numbers get kind of big here, but the first inequality, there's a common factor of four. So that inequality is really equivalent to um, 3x plus y less than or equal to 25. That'll make that one a little easier to work with. Um, similarly, on the other ones, then look for common factors uh, to make the problems a little easier um, for you to deal with. Okay. Mm -hmm.